This episode is all about acting. I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the years, eight things to keep in mind while you work on your acting shots, on your acting for your animation. We are going to talk about how you can actually do that in the best way possible, things to keep in mind while you're working through your shots. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is episode 38. Let's get to it. Acting is incredibly difficult to grasp uh, in animation because it involves much more than just moving a character about in a believable manner. Um, when you start animating, you go down the rabbit hole of like learning the basics and then finally knowing how to move a character. But then you, you, kind of, uh, you kind of stumble upon this new level of animation, which is you already know how to do animation, you already know how to move your character. So how do you go about adding thought and process and emotion to that one motion that you have done. The first thing that you have to keep in mind and the first tip that I would like to give is that emotion drives motion and motion does not drive emotion. That will probably be a weird thing, concept to actually grasp, but the idea behind it is basically that like your emotions, your character's emotions should drive how you move your character. Now, if you actually think about it the other way around, if you start moving a character and then finally trying to actually add emotion on top of that movement, it's gonna be much more difficult for you to actually start to think about what the character is thinking after the movement is already there. Before you even start animating, when you do your planning, Always think about what is the character thinking at any given moment, because if you do that, then you'll know what the movement is gonna be like, and you're gonna be able to instill that movement into that emotion. Also, I'd like to add something else on top of that, which is um, something that um, a lot of animators actually make a mistake, thinking that the thoughts of a character is what motivates them to move, but it isn't so. Um, thoughts merely uh, give you decisions that you can then act upon. So is the emotions of the character that actually make them move, not the thought process. Because you can perfectly be thinking while sitting still and looking up. And you're still thinking, but there's no emotion happening in your body. So is the emotions that you have inside, sadness, happiness, anger, all of those things are the things that actually make you move and act in a certain way. Thinking by itself does not make you act in any way. So make sure that emotions is what actually makes your character move, not thoughts. Um, separate the two and make sure you actually kind of get those emotions into the character uh, as early as possible. Think about that and I'm pretty sure that will make your character already move and act so much better than all the stuff that you've done so far. All of us have gone through this um, time period in your animation, I have, I have done it for sure, that you think that pushing animation is actually overacting. They are the same thing. You're pushing your animation, you're pushing your poses, and therefore your animation is gonna become automatically more entertaining. Well, when it comes to acting, simplifying things is actually the best thing you can do. Humans are lazy by default, by design, so we try to unconsciously do the very least we can do to portray an emotion. So if you feel angry, unless you are like incredibly angry and you're in a fight, <laughs> if you feel angry, most likely you're not gonna be like, ah, all the time. Most likely the anger is gonna be expressed by you either feeling still or scrunching your eyebrows or actually just being in thought for a little bit. That's angry. And that actually is quite simple instead of actually kind of a, physically showing that you're angry at all times and just like, you know, that is way too much. So if you think about your acting about how can I actually simplify this emotion that I'm actually trying to portray in my animation in the best way possible, this is when reference comes through very, very uh, useful uh, in your animations because you can actually see yourself doing the acting. That is the best way for your acting to feel natural and to feel like it's something that any person would do at any given moment, which then in turn means that your audience will connect with whatever is on the screen, connect with whatever they, they're actually seeing, because most likely they have done it before.
So this is mainly focused on the overall shot. Make sure that you don't cram in to your like few second shot a lot of information. Make sure that you keep things as, as clear as possible. Make sure that if it's like a breathing idol and a blink and a thought process, make sure that you actually distill that information into a very simple shot that you have maybe two or three key poses and you portray that emotion the best way possible. So the second tip was mainly like don't overact. And on this one, basically I'm saying don't cram too much information into your shot so people feel confused about what you're trying to say. Get one, two, three poses that are really strong and build off that. Don't try to actually make too much out of it. Your shot is gonna follow someone else's or your shot is gonna lead someone else's. So you wanna make sure that things are very even. So if you treat your shot as if it's the best shot ever, I am going to make it like super incredibly big and everything is going to be overacted and there's going to be so much information into it that means that that shot is going to get so much attention for no reason i have done this before that you just want to make sure that your shot stands out from the rest you want to make sure that you showcase all the skills that you have in the world in this one little piece that lasts a second two seconds <laughs> so um think less is more Less is definitely more in most cases in animation. Keep that in mind and then go to town on your shot. If it's your own personal shot, make sure that you establish a type of character that you want to do. What is this guy about? What is this girl about? Is he a happy person? A sad person? Is he a, a gunslinger? Is he a space ranger? And then build a strong character around what you want to say the story that you want to drive forward but keep in mind and keep it very clear what kind of character are you trying to sell and what is his personality what makes him tick inside if you are in a production most likely that has been defined before and if it is then uh, either ask for a sheet or ask for uh, animation tests or something that actually kind of gives you a general idea of how the character acts and what makes them tick. Because uh, as you go along, as you work more and more in the character, these things are gonna become natural. It's gonna become second nature. But in the very beginning, you are gonna probably try to infuse some of your own personality into the character because that is what we do as an animator. So you have to think about fundamentally, what is this character about? and does it look and feel like the character that I'm trying to put out there. If it starts to look much more different, much more like yourself maybe, too much more like yourself, then perhaps you're actually kind of a cheating that this is Wreck-It Ralph and this is how he's supposed to move and talk and act and punch and do all these other things. So keep that in mind at all times as you're going through your acting and just keep that as your kind of um, true tests, right? Everything you do, does it look like the character? Everything you do. And you just keep going that way to make sure that you never feel like uh, you're straying away from what the character truly wants to be in the end. And it's just, you're just infusing your thoughts and ideas, your animation into an already established character with a strong personality. all about the eyes. Your character's thoughts and emotions should always start with the eyes because that is the first thing the audience is gonna see and they're gonna look at. As you might have heard before as an animator that um, we humans, we look at each other's eyes in order to actually perceive emotions, thoughts, and to actually read someone else's. Then the peripheral vision kind of just fulfills the frame of the rest as you look at someone's eyes. It's the same thing in animation. If you make sure that as you're actually kind of getting that emotion, those thoughts into the character, that you can read them clearly just with the eyes, just by looking at the eyes and the animation of the eyes, that there is a brain there, there is some emotion behind those eyes, and that is clearly readable, then you're halfway to your finished shot. It's that simple. Two things, these eyeballs are the two most important things that you can animate in the whole shot, the eyes. Then the face, then the body. Um, a lot of people, a lot of animators, especially as you get started, they actually have a tendency to put so much focus on the locomotion, the body, the body mechanics, and then face is completely secondary and I'll, I'll just, I'll finish that later. When in reality, from an audience perspective, 
is the other way around. And then a little subset of an idea here is that do the eyes match the dialogue, the emotion while you're trying to say the lines? Um, because they can actually uh, do everything right and have emotions and have thoughts. But you have to make sure that as the lines are being spewed off the character, that the eyes are actually saying those lines without you having to open the mouth. You can say the same line in like three, four, five different types of emotional states and that line will probably sound very different depending on what the eyes are doing obviously depending on what the face is doing but especially the eyes the eyes can portray a lot so make sure that the eyes are saying exactly the same thing that the mouth is saying it's something very subtle but something that when is done right sells the character and the emotion behind those eyes really 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 well when you are saying the line, when you're doing your acting, does that match the intensity of what the line is saying, what the audio is actually saying? Because sometimes you can have an animation that is very animated while the line is actually not so much. Sometimes you have the other way around. You have to actually find that happy medium that the two things connect perfectly. So that energy, um, that momentum that the line has, you wanna make sure that you capture that that energy, that momentum into the animation itself. Make sure that it's not too much, not too flailing. If in your character's face you need to show emotion, um, here's a little tip that I've learned through the years and doing that shift of emotion. So if you actually want to do an emotional shift, so if you go from being sad to then all of a sudden being surprised, making sure that shift happens when the character is as still as possible. Because um, it's all about uh, letting your audience um, read and anticipate what is about to happen. So if the character has been still for a while, the audience already read that the character is still. So, and there's a noise going there, then the audience knows that something's about to happen and then you shift and you actually show surprise. Then your audience, you kept the audience informed throughout the whole shot and also means that your facial, your emotional shift happen in a moment that there was not a lot going on. Now, if I was actually kind of already moving about and all of a sudden I go from sad to like surprised, most likely what the audience would see is actually my body doing stuff and then being surprised at the end. But anything in between and anything that happened before, most likely it would be forgotten. So readability is key here to make sure that your character is as readable as possible and make sure that your emotional shift happens when the audience can actually perceive that emotional shift. Especially when it's a big emotional shift, perhaps it's a big scene that the character just went from very happy to very sad because someone died or something like that. You definitely want to make sure that that emotion, that shift happens exactly when your audience is glued to the screen, waiting for something to happen, then it happens, then they feel it, and then something else happens. So that is very important for the animator and for your audience. So keep that in mind. Emotional shifts happen when the character is still or doing very little so your audience can read it and can feel it. I want to talk a little bit about staging your characters and making sure that they actually kind of are readable. Um, now, um, let's say you have two characters and they are acting to each other. You need to make sure as an animator to um, always uh, let the audience be able to read which character needs attention right now in the most clear way possible. So only one character at the time needs to take center screen, meaning needs to have the attention of the audience and you need to actually make sure that the audience has the eyes glued into that character for the whole dialogue piece that they have they are talking having the secondary character just there breathing idling doing pretty much nothing really helps with that but only one character needs to actually kind of have the stage at any one moment like in real life when two people are talking at the same time you just don't know where to look and it becomes confusing and it's like what's going on so if there's two characters and they're talking to each other make sure that only one has the attention now if they both are delivering lines at the same time make sure that the spacing between that time is just enough for people to be able to shift from one character to the other now that shift between one character to the other should be seamless uh, the audience will almost feel or know where they should aim at at any one point. Because 
is that thing about looking at the screen and seeing a character talking and then they stop talking and then you almost anticipate the other one reacting to that line that was just said, right? How was your day? Look at the other side and now you're expecting the other character to deliver an answer to that question. And that is just like subconscious, right? We all do it. So having that time to think and to absorb the information, it's always good. So do play blasts, make sure you look, make sure that you feel that is the correct amount of time to transfer audio between characters. And when that feels quite right, then you know you got it. You know that it feels good. You know that you naturally as an audience actually can keep up with the audio and what's going on in the scene at any time. That saying of like, when everything is great, then nothing is, is very real in animation as well. So you as an animator, supervisor, director, lead, you wanna make sure that every shot that you do has a certain type of energy for the specific time within the story arc. So if it's like a low setting for the next five scenes, make sure that nothing really upstages anything. And it's basically something that perhaps you look at as an audience, but you don't really think, wow, it's amazing. Um, because it just carries the story forward. Then there's gonna be places where the story arc is gonna be like peaked and amazing and epic, and it's gonna be a lot of awesome things happening. Now that is also important and you have to make sure that those shots really sing and they are amazing. The quality of the animation should always be amazing no matter if you're doing an idol or if you're doing an action scene. But most importantly, what I wanna say with this is that um, your acting should always keep up with what you're trying to convey in depending on the scene. So ask your leads, supervisors, directors, what is the energy of this scene in the specific moment in the story. So you wanna make sure that while you think about all these seven previous steps, you're thinking about where does your story and your shot fit in and how can you best animate it so it can fit into that one sleeve of two seconds or three seconds perfectly. Yeah, it's a lot to think about in acting, but these are the eight things that have helped me um, the best way possible to kind of uh, put myself into a specific place where I can actually find the solutions to the acting that I want to portray in any one scene. Acting is really, really complicated, but uh, really worth pursuing. Um, something that you keep in mind at all times, no matter if you're working games, VFX, movies, something you should always keep in mind um, while you're doing any action whatsoever to think about what the character is thinking about, what kind of character is it, um, am I portraying being real to the character and how the character would move, um, and, uh, and does it feel like it has a little soul, like it has a little brain inside there? If it does, then job well done, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's basically all I had this week. I hope it helped some of you out there. And as always, until next week, stay well, stay safe, peace.